Hello and welcome to a Tinder Ginge. Now today this is going to be part three of my micro red sea reefer build. Um, if you watched the last video I showed you how I was um, fixing the crack that was on the tank that I made while drilling. Um, today we're going to be finishing off that crack so I've decided I am going to put another piece of glass on the outside to secure that. I also managed to find the little chipper glass which came out of the top so I'm going to be sticking that in place and I'm also going to be siliconing the plumbing in place as well so that's all solid. But as I mentioned in that last video, I was going to work on the frame so I could actually get this all set up. But unfortunately, because of everything that's going on with COVID-19, uh, the shop being q that I normally go to is shut, so I can't actually get the wood from there that I need. So for now, the base is going to have to be put on hold. But that doesn't matter because I actually can start work on doing the insert on this tank. So as I've mentioned before, there's going to be like a backscape on it and I'm going to have a floating shelf that comes out in the middle. Now to make that I'm going to be using polystyrene. I've got a load of polystyrene left over that whenever I get orders, I always keep it just because I know it's going to come in use for something. Um, I want to use polystyrene rather than rock because one, it's easy to mould, two, it's easy to make holes in if I want to put corals into it and also where that shelf is floating, I don't want to risk that falling and cracking the tank if it is made out of rock. So having it at polystyrene just means it's going to have that little bit of buoyancy just to support itself and if I do put corals and stuff on the actual shelf then they're, they're not going to force it down so it should hold itself pretty level. So we're going to jump straight in, I'm going to start shaping everything, get it all stuck together finish the tank off with all the ceiling and then hopefully we're going to be with that one step closer to getting this tank up and running. Here you can see I've actually got the plumbing in, installed. Um, this is how it's going to look. Obviously this is all going to be hidden because all of this is going to be boxed out eventually so you won't actually see any of that. But yeah, that's how it's going to go. I was originally going to put put some washers either side of this but because of the, the screw thread on this and how thick this would be and then adding the washers off side it just makes it too thick that this won't actually attach so instead I'm actually going to silicone these in place um, these won't be removed at any point once these are in they're in that's it um, luckily I've got this section here so when the pipe does plug onto this I can just take that off if I do ever need to drain the tank and move it so this area here where the pipe's going to be adjusted is just going to stay in place so that's the plan for that so before I start fixing the, the back of this tank and doing a little bit of extra work on here, uh, I'm actually going to start working on the, the insert for the inside. So I want to have like a, a wall that's going to sort of slant outwards, down like that. The shelf is going to come out to about two thirds of the way. And obviously here I'm actually going to put a piece of live rock which would be like a little island. So that's what we're going to work on today. Hopefully it works out well. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the width of this tank, so I'm going to measure from side to side, and that's how wide I actually want that back piece to be. So I've got my polystone here, I'm just going to measure from here to here, here to there, cut that line down, and then that's going to give me that width. So that's the width cut, so if I actually place this in the tank now, I want this to be quite a snug fit. Um, I don't want it to be loose, I mean I'm going to silicone this in anyway, but if I place that in, just like that, you can see that fits in perfectly. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to mark this top bit here and here, and then draw that line across, so I'm going to cut across and that's going to give me the height. Now I want this top piece to be flush with the top of this panel just because I think it's going to be a lot of a, a lot nicer look and also I'm hoping I can cut some round holes in this for these to pop through just so these can be hidden a little bit more and obviously you can see this little cracked area here it's going to hide all of that so that's the idea. So there you go so that's that cut now perfect dimensions and if I put that in the tank you can see there it's just level that room. I've made it a little bit lower just so that when I do coat this with the silicon and the sand just to make it look like rock it's going to hopefully come up to that lip a little bit neater just to make it a little bit more flush so that's that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same thing but I'm going to make another layer about this high and I'm also going to put another layer there so it's going to be like a sort of step effects like that because I want this to sort of slope down at an angle just to make it look like a bit of a cliff edge so that's what I'm going to do with the next two bits. So 
these are the three pieces cut. You can see I've got that gradient from the top up here going all the way down to the bottom. And obviously I'm gonna make this all carved out just so it looks a little bit more like rock. And then once I stick the actual sand and crushed coral on it, it should make it look a little bit more realistic. But the shelf is probably gonna come out from here this way. Um, I don't want it to be too high because if I've got some corals growing this and they're gonna be growing upwards, I don't want them to come out of the water. So it might be a little bit lower and I'm gonna have like a sort of inch of sand at the bottom. So there's that small gap underneath for everything to go under. But yeah, that's gonna be about the perfect height that I want that shelf on. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure out how far the shelf needs to come out. I'm also gonna measure here and here to where these bulkheads, little outlets there for the water are gonna be so that they can pop through and be hidden as well. So that's the next step. So what I've done, as you can see there, I've just scored the polystyrene, so that there is where I'm gonna then cut the hole. So I'm just gonna take one of the bulkheads off and I'm just gonna use that as my little measure. So I've put that in that line that I've scored and then I'm gonna use that to cut around and hopefully that'll give me a perfect circle to fit onto the tank. So I went around those holes, they don't have to be perfect because in the, the day, the more jagged these look, the more realistic it's gonna look anyway. So what I'm gonna do is now, I've got them, you can see there's a little bit of tear out of the front, but that's not a big issue because it's just gonna, I'm gonna cut all this up and mark it anyway. So that's gonna work to my, my benefit. So what I'm doing is now I'm gonna put this in place and hopefully this should cover both of those outlets. So this is the kind of thing that I'm looking for. It still needs to be shaped, don't forget, so it's just a rough look. What I am gonna do is with this top piece, because I've got that glass that's stuck onto that back there, it is creating that gap along there, and it's just stopping that, that polystyrene from going flush up against that tank. So what I'm gonna do is, where the top of this glass is along here, I'm gonna make a cut along there, separate this top piece from that bottom piece, and then that's just gonna enable me to push this all the way flat against this glass, just to try and help hide these two holes a little bit more. Okay, so what I've just done, as you watched, I've just made little random cuts going in all different directions along here. And that's because I don't want this to be a perfectly straight edge. I want this to be a little bit jagged to make it look like real rock. So I've done that. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snap that polystyrene and I just wanna try and get a load of rough edges on that side. Just say so it looks like a, a jagged piece of rock that's sort of been formed and, and snapped off. I don't wanna snap this tip off because I like that it comes to a point. Um, I'm gonna do the same all the way along here. I don't wanna go too far back because around about here, is gonna be hidden inside the insert and that's gonna give me that support that I need. But the rest of it, all of this, I'm gonna cut into and make it a bit jagged. I might even put another thinner piece in the center here. So rather than this just being flat, dead flat, it's gonna have that little bit of height to it. So something like that, just to give it a little bit more texture and realistic look. So now that's done, I'm gonna measure to see how far in this is gonna go into the background and then I'm gonna cut the hole in the background for this to actually slot into. And there we go, that's how it's come to so far. You can see I've gone through both layers of this polystyrene, so it's gone right through to the back, just to try and give this as much strength so it's not, it's not gonna snap or anything, anything like that. So let's get that into the actual tank. So off camera, I did cut this little piece up as well, um, just to put it in the middle of that ridge. I didn't need to show you that because there's only so much polystyrene you can watch being cut until it gets boring. So that's that middle shelf bit, and this is how it's looking so far. That is awesome. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but that's basically exactly what I imagined. That shelf coming out, 
Don't forget on this background we're going to have all corals attached to the outside there. This section here is all going to be filled with coral and don't forget I've got this island section that's going to be coming up here as well which is going to be a piece of, of rock and that's, that's just going to set the whole thing off. There's going to be plenty of room for the corals to grow. I want a lot of movement in this tank as well with the water so that's why it's quite open. I don't want any big rock structures. That's why I wanted the floating shelf partially as well just to allow that water to flow around and yeah that is what we've come up with so far. I'm not going to glue it to the tank just yet. Um, so this top piece here will have to wait to be glued, but these three pieces and the shelf can all be siliconed together. I'm going to wait before sticking this onto the back, just because I do want to silicone the back of this tank and I want to silicone these in place as well, just so that's all secure and ready to go. I just want to texture this a little bit, so I'm just going to cut some grooves out in this, just to make it look a little bit more rock-like, um, so that when I do apply the silicone over the top and then put the sand and the crushed coal and stuff like that to it, it's just going to give it that contour and that, that feeling of live rock, like a, a cliff face that's sloping down into the ocean. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, obviously I don't have to do the whole piece because a lot of this is going to be hidden by the other pieces. So this piece is going to be stuck onto there, just like that. So obviously I'm just going to do a little score line. So obviously I've only need to cut this section here and make this look like a rock. Now I'm going to do some little jabs and cuts all the way around with the knife and I'm actually going to use my hands and I'm just going to pick out pieces and hopefully it gives me little fluffy jagged edges just like this and that's just going to make it look a little bit more natural like real rock. So score that line in. I know a rough bit that I need to work on. Now I'm just going to stab around in there, make loads of little cuts in every single direction. I'm not cutting all the way through, I'm just making little stabs into the material just to try and loosen up all the pieces. Just so it's easy for him to tear out now because I'm going to go with my hands and I'm literally just going to use my nails and I'm going to claw out pieces like that. And hopefully I'm going to do it all over and it should give me that fake rock surface face. And I'm aiming for something to look like that. So this is what I was going for, just a nice jagged edge. You can't really see it on the camera, but it is quite contoured. If I look at this angle, you can see all the lumps and bumps in it. And that's just going to give it that natural rock look. Once the actual sand and the coral stuck to this, hopefully that's going to make it look more naturalistic. So I'm going to do it with the other two pieces, do it with the shelves, and then I can get it all glued together. So that's all the pieces done. You can see I've scraped out all the areas that need to be scraped out. With the floating shelf parts, you can see I've not done too much because they are quite thin as it is. And if I dig out too much till on the top, it is gonna make it a little bit more flimsy. So I've literally just scuffed this up enough just to make it look a little bit natural. And then this top piece I've just left flat anyway because once I put the sand and the crushed coral on top of this, it will give it the texture that I want. So I just wanted to try and keep this as structurally sound as possible. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to take the silicone and I'm finally going to get all these stuck together. And there we go, you can see it's all stuck together. And you can see from a distance, it has got that grainy effect I wanted. Now that bottom piece underneath there that you can see that it's still flat, I'm not too worried about that because in today I'm still gonna cover it with the sand and the crushed coral, but I'm gonna have about an inch of sand. So the sand's gonna come up to about here, which is gonna hide it. And then the sand and the coral stuck to it is gonna sort of mask it anyway. So I didn't really see any point doing that. Um, plus it is gonna be in a shadow, so you're not gonna see it that much and it's just excess work that you don't really need. So here we go. That is how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna pop it in the tank now because I can't wait and I really wanna see what it looks like. Oh my God, check that out. How amazing does that look already? And that's just the polystyrene, that's without anything else on it. That looks absolutely incredible. So yeah, as you can see, that shelf comes out to just over halfway. And then here we are gonna have 
just in this section here we're going to have that little piece of rock so yeah that that is absolutely amazing don't forget we still need to stick those pieces on the top there but i'm actually going to silicone those two pipes in place now so it's solid and i'm also going to do the silicone on the back just to make sure that's all solid as well to make sure the glass doesn't leak so i'm going to take this polystyrene out lay it back on its side let that cure and get the rest of it silicone together so to seal the back of this tank I, I had another piece of glass that was left over from the cracked glass that I had from the order. Um, luckily it's the perfect size that it actually fit over that crack. So like I did with the first part of this glass, I cleaned all the silicon off because old silicon won't stick to new silicon. Made sure that was all clean. And then on the back of the tank I scraped all the outside of the tank down again just to make sure I've got a nice surface to adhere to. And once I did that I took some of the silicon and I spread it all the way along the crack just to make sure it was all sealed and I just massaged that in just to make sure that any gaps that were left were filled. After that, before actually putting the glass onto the back to help support it, I glued in the two inlet and outlets. Now I wanted to silicone these in first just to make sure they were nice and solid and then the bit of glass on the outside butted up to the top. Now when I cracked this tank, I originally had a piece of glass that pinged off. Somehow I managed to find that and I've actually glued that in place. So I put the, the bulkhead in place, put a little bit of silicone on the outside, then I put that top piece of glass in the top with a load of silicone to try and secure it. And then with the screw head on the other side, I screwed that in place just to clamp that little piece of glass in so it can't move. And it's covered with enough silicone, I think that's going to create a nice seal around that area. I then done exactly the same for the other side, siliconed all the way around both sides of that bulkhead and I made sure that was nice and secure in place as well. I just went around the outside of it just to make sure the silicon spread evenly. Once that was done, I took the spare piece of glass I had from the broken tank, put a nice helping of silicon all the way over and then I placed that onto the back of the tank, put a lot of firm pressure on just to try and get as much of the air out as I can and just spread that silicon as far as I could. Now I've not pressed it too hard, I've done it just so that there's enough to spread over the glass, it creates that thick layer to give that strength onto the back of that glass. And then once I've done that, I've gone around the outside of that glass with another bead of silicon just to make sure it is completely airtight and watertight. So I'm really happy with the way that's turned out. Um, I think that's gonna be nice and secure so that nothing's gonna leak. And as you can see, this is the end result. So I've got that piece of glass on the outside that's gone on. That's nice and secure. You can see that small piece of glass that chipped out, out of the top. You can hardly see it now from where I've wedged it in place. It's just in the center of the screen. And I've siliconed that in place just to make sure that's not gonna move and it is watertight. Now you can see the silicone I've put around both the bulkheads just to make sure they're watertight as well. So they're now secured in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip this tank up on its side just to make sure this piece on the side doesn't move. Leave that to set overnight, then this tank should be completely watertight. And I'm gonna do exactly the same with the insert as well, just to make sure that's nice and secure when I start putting that in place. Okay, so that's the tank as it stands. Now I've not fixed any of this in place yet. Um, obviously I need to seal all of this with silicon and I need to put the sand and crushed coral on that just to give that look. So this isn't gonna be secured in place just yet. Um, once it is, I will be doing, the next video will be covering that. Um, I may also have a piece of rock found. Now this tank is gonna be pristine. I'm not gonna be moving anything from my large tank into this. This is gonna be a complete new setup. Everything's gonna be dry rock, dry sand, because I don't want anything being carried over with the other stuff. Um, the only thing that we'll be going into obviously is new fish and new coral. Um, and yeah, a lot of that I'm gonna try and quarantine if I can, just to make sure it's not bringing over any bacteria or any algae or anything like that. So this tank's gonna be pristine, because I'm gonna get some very expensive corals for this tank. I want this to be bursting with color, so that it's something that's always gonna catch your eye and you're gonna see something different every time. Okay, so that's going to be the end of this video for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I've made quite a lot of progress on this. Uh, again, I did say at the beginning, this is going to be quite a long series because I'm trying to fit this in in between work, dealing with my snakes and doing all the other bits and bobs that I like doing. So bear with me. It's going to be a long series, but it's going to be well worth the wait. Once this, as you can see, the, the landscape and this is going to look amazing, especially when it's all put out with the sand and the coral. It's going to look absolutely amazing. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. You don't want to miss this series. It's going to be really, really good and really worth the effort that I'm putting into it. So subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment if you want to know anything else, and I'll see you in the next one. stuff is so messy it literally gets everywhere <laughs>